welcome to cue the music live uh this is ralph i'm joined by david from the vinyl score and it looks like charlie brigden just popped into the studio oh wonderful charlie how's it going not too bad how are you <laughs> doing all right it, it, it's it's been a weird day and you know what's funny is the last time i did a, a live stream with david i believe we were talking about funko's acquisition of mondo and i wanted to say at the time david we were hopefully optimistic about it yeah i thought they're trying to be you know trying to yeah yeah, yeah. not trying to cast it too negatively to start so and then here we are nine months later it's been <clears throat> nine months that's it and they've already i don't know how many people they've cut out um uh from mondo Sounds yeah like, i want to say i want to say they said something around half yeah but, and but the thing that the thing that really got me curious was that they um got rid of the poster division now nothing against the poster division but i feel like when it comes to posters and manufacturing posters there's less moving parts and posters feel like it's a it's a it's printing money and i'm really really anxious and i have some sort of ideas of what is happening um and I, i'd like to get your guys thoughts uh charlie um i mentioned i try to mention your name every time i do an unboxing video of a toho uh uh record from mondo because you write the ob strip blurbs and liner notes and stuff like that so you you you're like it, you know these people you know the folks at Mondo, and you probably have more information than I do. I don't know, just based on relationships. And you don't have to say anything about it, uh, but, I mean, you can if you want. But mostly, I just want to get your guys' opinion on the news that broke today. I just yeah, think, I for me, just the first thing is that I just feel – I feel bad when anybody's mass laid off, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and their life gets changed in any industry, right? Uh, right. So I definitely, you know – uh, my heart goes out to all those people and families that are maybe affected by that. Um, you know, Charlie, I'll let you speak from your, from your experience working with them too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I don't really need to know anything more than you guys. Um, okay. I briefly um, heard from Spencer earlier cause I asked if he was okay. And I he's just well. kind of, yeah. So, uh, and, and just kind of got just a message back saying that he'll kind of chat later. Um, but um, it's just kind of just just feels kind of a shock, <clears throat> I guess, because the poster side of things um, always has been so successful. I mean, you know, it's right. like these things go up, go in seconds. Mm. Um, well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that the first enterprise? I mean, wasn't that the first thing? Uh, the vinyl, I thought, was very secondary and toys third. But uh, I think that was what they started with. Yeah, absolutely. And then because it, it wasn't really, I mean, because they, they did kind of like occasional records and then kind of they bought Death Waltz and that whole thing kind of wrapped up, really. But no, the, they started with the posters and... Uh, which which is why it's, I guess it's such a shock, really. Especially right. since they've, well, they they've obviously they've laid off um, quite a few of their staff, but kind of like the, the kind of the old guard, as it were, behind that side of things. Right. Yeah, those long term founders, um, uh, at least, and that's all. Those are the only people I've heard na like named. Uh, not that I would know a bunch of the names, but I I, I do know that uh, the the second article I read, uh, at least you know named named some of the 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 you know original founders as as folks. I I feel like Mo Spencer are the people I know, and I and I've never thought if they were you know founders or not you know, and so it's it's interesting to to kind of get get that glimpse and all. I think 
there were some uh, really interesting quotes in the second article I read from some artists that felt that, that are feeling that um, uneasiness and uh, that are sound very reluctant and disheartened by the change uh, uh, that took place. Cause whether, cause the second article I read too kind of made it sound like they hadn't confirmed, they hadn't heard the confirmation that the posters were gone, but maybe that it was going to change uh, and then that's kind of what some of the artists were responding to is the change without those people there, you know, they had less assurances of what, what to expect and what the process would be like. And maybe it's just intended to wind it down over time. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of pre-orders that are out as far as, um, the toys go, like as far as masters of the universe line, I'm familiar with that. Uh, they have like, they just did a pre-order for like trap jaw and they're doing stuff like, um a skeletor and a pan panther I'm, <clears throat> anyway they're doing all these toys and that's stuff that's like there's a lot of moving parts to get that stuff done and so they're probably gonna make sure those get fulfilled but beyond that who knows the same with the vinyl side and with the vinyl side which is the stuff i care about and i'm sure we all care about that um is that there's there's a ton of stuff on the Obi strips, and you guys will know this, that say coming from Mondo, coming soon from Death Waltz. Um, Charlie, I'm sure you've probably written some um, stuff for Toho releases that, you know, that we don't even know about yet. Who knows? But I feel like the way it feels to me is like posters can get done on a fairly quick turnaround once they come up with the concept once the artist puts in their final their final version it can go up get printed out shipped out fairly quickly vinyl takes a lot longer and i'm wondering if they chose posters first and the rest are just coming once they're done uh finishing with all those moving parts um because because the way they were doing things was you get a toho release maybe once a month and they'd wait until the product got into texas put up the orders and they'd ship you know two three days later but now at the beginning of the year they dropped three pre-order of toho records at the beginning of the year and then last month they did another drop of two toho records in the middle of the month and it's like this isn't how they used to do it it yeah, wasn't I remember, pre-orders i remember thinking i'm I'm glad I am not involved in buying Toho because I, uh, it was uh, I, mean, I don't it was, have to get involved. It you used know? to be fine because Waxwork was releasing one a month and Mondo was releasing one a month. And I can deal with two records a month. But when Mondo starts releasing three a month, then two a month, I'm like, something's different. Something's <clears> happening. <throat> it feels like they're just trying to get through this process and make money and just send out the stock when they get it. I have no idea, but that's what it feels like that day. They released three records. Uh, it was, it was Rodan, uh, Godzilla GMK. And then, um, I forget what the third one was. Uh, oh, shit. Um, Ghidorah. Was that then Charlie, do you, do you remember what those three were that day? No, I don't. Um, but it was, it was insane. It was like, I couldn't believe that they were doing this. And with the pre-orders, it said one was coming in a month, one, the other was coming in two months and the other was coming in three months. And it's like, why not wait till the stock comes in? That's how you've been doing it. If they're going to get to get to Texas monthly, then why are we waiting for that stock to come in before you put it up for order? So something felt off. And with, with, Funko dropping the axe on Mondo, things feel even more off. Because nine months ago, they said, we're not changing anything. And here we are today, and they changed a whole bunch. And, and, and they make it impossible to believe. Why would I believe Funko with anything they say? You know, they say the records, the records are intact, the toys are intact, but for how long? Well, has there been any official word out of Wonder? Uh, I, I haven't heard so. anything. I think no, it's just, yeah, I, I think it's just those articles. Yeah, because you, you, you hear the different things about they, they saying that they will keep the, the collectibles and the uh, and the uh, the records. Obviously, 
Toho, they have the lights to sync with the collectibles as well. And they just yeah. had a pre-order the, the Space Godzilla statue. Um, yeah. So there's a lot with uh, Toho as well and their licensing. Um, but then I read another article that said insiders or whatever uh, said that they're they're not sure about the records either. Right. <clears throat> and that right. they're... Um, and kind of uh, looking to ally it with the way they uh, they have with Loungefly, which they bought with before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was one of the things where that I had a positive take on Funko purchasing Mondo was Loungefly. Because with Loungefly, they got more licenses, they put out better product, they put out more things. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be really good for Mondo. But now everything's up in the air. I mean, I'd because the thing is, here's the thing: like, it takes so much to make a record. I've worked at a record factory, and for the short amount of time I worked there, there's a lot that has to be done to go to to produce a record. A lot. There's a ton of moving parts. But I wonder for posters. It's for posters. It's not. So why, if you're so easy to get rid of the easy thing, like if that's so easy to do. Why are you holding on to this thing that's harder to do? Ralph, I wonder if, because uh, I, I was just thinking about this as you were talking through this earlier, like the posters are pretty small runs and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the licensing that goes into that, I'm sure there are some typical hurdles to kind of coordinating all of that. Right. Uh, I was just looking at their website too, while we were chatting, because I was like, I wonder what's, what's you know, right, right up in center. And, you know, the, there's like seven or eight things and like ha more than half are Marvel. And I wonder if maybe this is going to be like a winnowing of the uh, weirder stuff and uh, them saying, well, if we if we have these existing licenses with these big, big IP IP names, why don't we just make, you know, 10,000 of these and we can we can do that for um, less overhead and less headache than, you know, doing three different mm -hmm. posters at 300 each. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that those sell fast, but I don't know how much money that makes. And, right. and, and if they are like, well, instead we'll, we'll put our, we'll put our chips closer to all this Marvel IP or big IP names like do like Toho or whatever, uh, and push those. Like, I was just happy that I like, just looking at that list, you know, the things, that, the things I love is when they take flyers on, on, on odd things and, and push those out there. And I'd hate to right. see those drop off. I've also noticed that the last three months that they've, um, done a lot more distributed titles. And I uh, did a big video game section. All of a sudden, you know, they had like 30 distributed uh, titles for video games, which I, my first blush, I was like, oh, cool. There's a lot happening here, right there in your hand, right? Yeah, uh, Beautiful Joe 2 from Mondo. Uh, but uh, I forget who released this, but I still haven't opened this. I need to open this up. But Yeah, so I wonder if yeah. that's maybe part of what we're seeing is that like, that that doesn't make any money, and uh, and it's not worth the licensing to coordinate and figure out if we're only selling 900 posters each drop. And I kind of making those numbers up again. I'm not a poster guy, so yeah. I might be a little off with my numbers, but I don't think I'm too far off. Right. Well, that that's the thing. I mean, I was looking at numbers earlier where when they bought Monday, they they, they paid 14 million for them. And then mm -hmm. rec recently, there's just been these uh, reports um, that they've put twice the amount, 30 million worth of pop figures in a landfill. Right. Yeah. I saw some great comments that was like, uh, you know, what what's the ju what, what's the reasoning here behind that? Uh, when you dump all this plastic into the landfill... I uh, would for and this is what has to get the axe in comparison. Right, they had a they, they apparently they had to dump the the pops because it cost more in storage. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, whatever you have to do. I mean, I'm maybe, confused maybe, by them in general, but you know, I, I mean, I'm not trying to knock anyone who likes them, but I. Uh, I'm a little like, okay, why are they making them anyway? But, you know. But th that's the thing also is who at Funk, like if you have 30 million, you know, amount of pops, if you have enough for $30 million worth of pops, is anybody looking at what those, that IP is and what's not selling and 
changing their game plan. Yeah, it's it's really it, it's 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 frustrating. Um, I don't know. I mean, I got a message from from Spencer today on Instagram because I posted that if anybody like I if anybody from Mondo or Death Waltz decides to jump ship and start something new that I'll do everything in my power to make them succeed. Um, I will back them up 100%. Uh, Spencer sent me a message. He sent me a voice message um, uh, thanking me. And uh, he really didn't want to talk, but he, he just sent me a, a quick audio message. He didn't sound in great spirits. Um, somebody asked me how Mo and Spencer are doing. I said, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just a guy on the internet. I interviewed him once. Um, and I've seen them at uh, conventions, <clears throat> but um, I, I just based on their social media, uh, Spencer posted today on Instagram that it was a, uh, it was a, uh, oh, what do you Shitty say? Week. Shit fest. Yeah. He yeah. said it was really just a shit fest this week. Um, and then Mo yesterday just posted a, a picture of the Mondo team. Well, that, and, that was in hind, in, in, you know, in reflecting now on like the day yeah. of social media, uh, you know, the last 24 hours, so just, just scrolling or whatever is I, I saw that group picture too. And I thought, um, honestly, my first thought was, Oh, they must be having like an all staff in Austin. You know, yeah. I, I, I had like, that was my first thought. I thought, Oh, cool. You know they're all they're all getting together for some you know weekend or something and and then and then I saw I saw a similar you know post from Spencer with just a heart or something and I I thought okay and then I saw the article and I went oh no that's shit not what that was you know all that shit went down yeah and I mean yeah. I I would love I I don't know man I mean Spencer Spencer already built Death Waltz. And I don't know if it's something he'd want to start all over again, but man, I, I, I kind of, I kind of, and I don't want, I don't want Mondo to fail obviously, but I just, if the rug could be pulled out, you know, this quickly, then, then I'd, 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 I'd rather go somewhere else. And I hope that um, that somewhere else is the people behind Mondo before the, the acquisition of Funko, because they all are nice people. They're all good people. Um, uh, I'm friends with Michael Giacchino and he has nothing but great things to say about his relationship with Mo and Spencer and uh, the team at Mondo. And it's, it, it's, it's really shitty. It's really shitty. I was really hoping that Mondo, even though it's a dumb corporate entity, would be able to do good. Their their whole thing is everybody's a fan of something. And they just shit on every single poster fan of Mondo. Uh, Tim has I'm waiting. I'm just I'm waiting for it to come to us. Tim has a great comment about the posters too that I think is super relevant to kind of what we're talking about. Is that he says he thinks it's more of a case that posters don't lend themselves to flooding the stores with product. They're only sold through Mondo and nobody else. And that's a great point, mm -hmm. right? The vinyl can get out there. The toys, well, they can make a limited version for online. Then they can put those out in the stores later. The vinyl, the black vinyl editions can be in stores, right? Uh, maybe they make a colorway for, did, for retail, Disney. but the posters don't, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess so, but I can't imagine those posters not making money. I mean, they've, they've gone from they've gone from just selling out in you know, 30 seconds to doing these timed releases where they, where they, where they give you 24 hours for anybody to get it. And then once that 24 hours is up, then they, they make the run. I can't imagine. Like, I, I just don't, I don't understand. I don't know. I don't Tim, know. If you know Maybe more than us about the poster side, it seems like you're plugged in go throw something in the chat about it. Cause I, I I'd love to know more. I'm, right. I'm, so, I'm so vinyl. <clears throat> yeah, me too. I mean, I think because obviously you walk into a store now and you see the wall of Funko Pops. Right. And maybe, yeah, maybe it is trying to kind of control the business where maybe they, they just kind of because they, they, 
I've heard things about them still wanting to do post-its. So maybe it's mm -hmm. it's maybe just something more about making them, yeah, probably like you say, less weirder and more kind of the obvious licenses, maybe like the Marvel stuff, things like that. And then maybe make making more amounts that they are gonna that they can potentially sell yeah. in stores. I mean, yeah, the records are a great point as well. And um that you can go you can go in like the HMV, you can go and buy a load of Funko Pops and then you can go and buy the records. Right. Um and I'm wondering just, if it could be a thing where someone like Disney shows up and says, Hey, um, we're looking at our poster of Ant-Man Quantumania and it's right next to a poster of Cocaine Bear. And maybe that's just something they don't like IPs sort of being next to each other or being part of the same release. Um, cause I know Spencer had mentioned like Marvel, Disney and, and, and DC and stuff like that. When you look at the spine of the record, it's Mondo. But when you get Toho stuff and you get some of the weird shit that they release, it's under on the spine. It'll say Death Waltz. Mm. Like there's a separation of, of sort of what these things fall under, so that you don't have a intermingling. So that when the when the uh, the the normal uh, Disney adults come in, you know they don't have to see some some crazy shit next to I don't know uh and like just ant-man you know like it's like yeah, it's maybe. such a it's such a crazy thing and i don't know like I, if that's the case then call it something different do do po keep mondo posters mondo posters and do marvel posters under something else i don't know create death waltz posters so that we can still get our posters of uh, of all the weird of cocaine bear and then just do Mondo posters where you can get your your uh, your Black Panther poster. Um, and it isn't just even exclusive to just, you know, more uh, provocative content, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I understand, like, from a, from a, if I was making children's products being next to Cocaine Bear, I might have thoughts about the advertising plan. But, but right. even, even the more low key things, like, I didn't know who was going to put out the Banshees of Inner Sharon, but um, I, I I'm, I'm so glad I'm so glad it's it's coming, and I love the look of the, like I, I was like oh this is great. I don't want those things to kind of drop off, and I'm sure somebody would pick up the licensing. You know I'm I'm not right. I mean I think we're at the point right now where most things are coming out like there's not a lot that's being left you know uh, to the side particularly, but um, I like the blend. I like the blend of it all because I don't need every Marvel. It's not my bag. Maybe yeah. one out of eight I might, you know, might be interested in or something like that. But depends um, on the composer. Yeah, it's it's just I love the potpourri of it. And and that's right. kind of the power of Mon the the Mondo Deathwalt's double, you know, uh uh double whammy is that they both have different vibes and the blending of them makes makes for part of the fun, I feel like, of the company. Right it's it's yeah it's a little frustrating i i don't you know i i, I kind of just wish these guys would just would all just be like you know what we're out of here we're gonna do our we're gonna keep doing our what we're doing we made friends along the way and we're gonna just start up a new you should you should things, throw, but it would throw take up Tim, tim's last comment too he's talking about the artists because i think that goes hand in hand with what you're saying if they're if they're bailing right. uh if they're bailing yeah, that's the thing. Um, we we've seen this before with uh, with other companies. Artists artists separating themselves from from you know these kinds of deals, and um, I kind of want like I don't I don't know I don't know. I think it's frustrating because you look at someone like Waxwork, and Waxwork is putting out great stuff. I also get their Toho stuff. They decided to dump all their stuff into one big box, which I got. Um, so their stuff doesn't come as often. And I'm not a huge horror guy, but Waxwork is good about, you know, mixing up new artist artwork for covers and uh, using poster art for others. 
depending on the movie. I don't know. They just dropped. Uh, they just dropped. What did they just drop today? Um, uh, knock at the cabin. Uh, yeah, and they use poster art for that, which is fun. Is that the poster, the poster art? art's cool. I'm pretty sure it's the poster. Oh, art. It looks so like cool. I hadn't seen it. It, but it looks this. like. It looks like Mano's Hands of Fate's poster with, of it picking up the house. Well, and that old um, Saul Bass. It's like a Saul Bass. Yeah, look. Uh, I can't think of the. I can't think of the old. It's not Man with the Gold. Man with the Golden Arm. Uh, Maybe uh, is a classic. It reminded me of, but the way it used negative space on the fingers was was really cool. Right. Uh, right. But you, you and know, Waxwork is a is a great example of another direction a company could go for stability. Right. And I don't, you know, it's tough to know. I don't, I don't know everybody's financial situation, right? I mean, <laughs> if Waxwork has the money to start their own pressing plant, bless, bless their, bless yeah. their heart. I probably would start one too if I could. But you know, um, it, it's interesting though to, to look at them now uh, and say, well, here's two choices that that these two places, you know, they made, and I don't know if they could have made the same choices, but now Waxwork's starting their own pressing plant. And then Mondo's over here and they feel like they're on the edge of, of change in major ways. And, uh, you know, Waxwork feels like, uh, like, especially now after today's news looks incredibly stable. Um, uh, right. just, we are now in a position to do our own business uh, continually. In-house. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. In-house. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I, I never... I never felt there was any sort of <clears throat> fighting between those two companies. I feel like Mondo and Waxwork. I mean, there might be. I don't know. They, yeah, I don't know. I'm either. sure they're. I'm sure they're going after you know similar licenses, especially with Toho, because I'm super like when it comes to Waxwork, like I get all of their Toho stuff, and then maybe something else. Like I'll get like a you know taxi driver because I love Sleepy Bernard Hollow. Zimmer. Sleepy Hollow because that was yeah. the, the the that was the first date that me and my wife went on was uh, to see sleepy hollow yeah, i knew there so, was something i knew there was something for you that was like that yeah yeah and it, there's i'm not i'm not a horror guy but you know waxwork every once in a while will release like something where i'm like oh this is really good this is this is what i want so they're able to like capture my attention um and not just stick to horror and i'm hoping once they get this plant done they can like do more of that stuff and yeah. if mondo's if mondo uh, God forbid goes away. Um, there's going to be a lot of licenses sort of just dropped. And I don't think Disney music emporium would just keep on. I don't I mean, they might still put out records, but, but who's got the, who, you know, I also, I think who's got the energy to deal uh, with Disney and those IPs right. and those lawyers and that like yeah. all, all of the, of the red tape that goes along with some of those, some of those things, like it's a, I, I always, I always wondered if it was kind of a gift and a curse um, to, to, you know, you, yes, you get these big hot brands, but then um, I've heard in some of their like Mondo happy hours, they'll talk about the process for approval. You know, the more and more people there are involved, the more and more people need to say yes. And the, the example they used, well, yeah. this is not Disney was Fight Club. They were like, well, we were going to have Brad Pitt and Edward Norton on the cover, but they said, well, if you do that, then Brad's people and Ed's people need to say yes. And they were like, we're, only, we're already dealing with Fincher. Like, let's cut our losses on a few of these things. So they, they pivoted, right? But that's a, that's a great example of like all the small things that go into that that I don't necessarily think yeah. of every time. But that's got to be a, a bear to wrestle with. Well, that's, that's just, I think it was La La Land. They did a, um, it may have been... Their, their edition of Dances with Wolves, the John Barry score, um, or it could have even been the James Newton Howe Water Award. Um, but literally, they had to wait years to get Kevin Costner's sign off on the artwork. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to say I, 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 I had a, I did an interview with Henry Abrams, who did the artwork for uh, Michael Giacchino's The Batman uh, record, and it was, it was one of those things like. Robert Pattinson has to sign off on it. Um, and it seems like it happened pretty quickly. And I think that wasn't, wasn't as a hard of a hard of a thing, but yeah, it's tough. It, it's tough, but it's, it, I feel like, I mean, you know, Mondo seems to be pretty good at getting this stuff taken care of. And I, 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 I don't know if that's a, like, that's a testament to them, but it is it because it's such a small group and you have like, 
like when you think of Mondo, you think of Mo and Spencer. And these guys are spearheading these things. And I think, I don't know if it's when you get a call from them, it feels more personal and they can get things done faster. I don't know how it works, but I feel like Mondo's really good. And I don't know if it's one of those things where Disney's such a big corporation that they don't give a shit about what's happening over here. And Mondo and Spencer have a relationship with people within this giant corporation that could say yes. But I know I am 8-bit. Um, they released uh, Gravity Falls on on vinyl, and I pre-ordered Gravity Falls on vinyl because my wife is a huge fan. I like the show. Took a year from the time I pre-ordered it. Took a year. It still hadn't been. There'd been no updates, and then a year later they said, "Oh, we got approval on the artwork." And I'm like, "That's step number one before you do the pre-order, guys." Yeah, don't tell and anybody so- what you're up to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the thing, kind of and fat, so I'm like, right? okay, so the art now that the art is approved, now you got to go make print out these gatefolds, lay them out. Uh, it doesn't, it's not quick, and there's a long line for these things to get produced, and now you're jumping in the back of the line a year later. And uh, a friend of mine was like, that's probably because Disney, Disney's a pain in the ass to approve approve stuff, but I feel like Mo and Spencer with Marvel got got in there pretty quick with with Werewolf by Night uh Michael's score they did the pre-order on Halloween and they probably wanted to get it on Halloween while it's fresh in everybody's mind and who you know I mean Werewolf by Night's amazing and the score is terrific and but like come November 1st does anybody care about Halloween stuff so they did the pre-order of Werewolf by Night, and on that pre-order it said, "Fine, this is not final art; hasn't been approved yet," which for me was nuts. But they were able to still sort of get that out, and I believe I just got an email saying that it's showing up a month later. I think it's showing up in in May instead of March. It was supposed to show up this month, but but still, like considering, you know. Like if it took them that long to approve Gravity Falls, Mo and Spencer got it, got Werewolf by Night approved but in a decent could, amount of time. You know, and that could be part of their whole business plan too. Is that you know do they do they work they work on that Marvel uh, Disney Plus you know stream well in advance um other you know rather than i mean i am 8 bit is much smaller in, in comparison right. and, and you know they probably well, gravity falls gravity falls is way smaller than marvel mm. yeah. it, it could be it could be as well that they've got a relationship with jakina himself right yeah <clears throat> because of the the kind of the previous ones records that they've released with it right and um, that's what's great that's what's great if i mean listen I want this thing to work out for everyone involved. That's what I want. If they have to start up a new company, I would, I would bet you like Jakina would go wherever they go. Um, Depending on the studio, of course, but he released an album that wasn't, um, that wasn't a soundtrack through through the travel log. Yeah. 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 So that was obviously, again, the relationship with him. So if they've got that personal relationship, but again, because he's such a big figurehead at Disney as well. Right. It's whether or not, if they were to leave, then would that further complicate things? Because then you've got the loyalty to to Disney as well. I mean, and that's the thing, because like you said, they've got the licenses they've got, especially with the Disney. So they're putting out things for Star Wars and things like that, putting out all the Marvel things and they've got, all sorts of things. Um, so with those licenses there already. Right. There's a good But be it a seems like they're able to, uh, I feel like they're able to move those faster than than other people. Hmm. The 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 werewolf by night, I believe they told me on their show, on my show, that on their episode that they weren't allowed to see the, the movie ahead of time. 
like once it was out, then they could start getting to work. I'm sure they could do some pre-planning with Michael and stuff, but you know, that, that came out, you know, just last, just last October. It's that's not what months. I would, that's not what I would think. I would think that they would get, you know, concept art or, or, you know, so, some smattering of, of, so. of at least look to, to start basing stuff on. There was, there was, Spencer was talking about one project that they worked on that they had to start and have finished with the packaging and, and design within a month. And the time he told me this, I was thinking it might be smile. It might've been smile. That's just me guessing at the time when we talked, but, um, but I mean, they, I, I, I don't know. I, I really hope, listen, the, 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 the Disney license is huge. And I don't see Disney going anywhere else. If, if these guys were to, to jump ship, um, they have Disney Music Emporium, but it feels like Disney Music Emporium is just grabbing uh, what Mondo did and putting in like the black records or the. Or, or, or they're or, just re regurgitating previous uh, designs. And I don't have a problem with that. You know, no, they're not at all doing things that are already done. <clears throat> so just redo exact, exactly like. I uh, uh, like that Tron that, that you highlighted a couple of mm -hmm. uh, like last yeah. year. Like that's just a straight reissue. Yeah, my... Fine, no worries. But yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, my Wendy Carly. But, but uh, yeah, the the really more yeah. artistic like like uh, uh, side of that, I think they're leaving to that, and then they kind of bring some over. No, but if we can find like a way, Mandalorian box. Yeah, if we can so find a way to blame Disney for this, I'm I'm really open. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's, it's like the different audiences. Because you see the uh, the it's it's almost like the kind of the casual fan they'll sell the uh, the picture discs to the Emporium ones with the you know the, with the, with the clear covers and that and 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 you'll you'll find those in the Disney store and places like that maybe mm -hmm. um, whereas you've got Mondo for the other stuff and again Disney is is the huge thing because again Loungefly. When you look at all their launch fly stuff and how much of that mm. is Disney, right? Yeah, um, those even, are all over the parks. Even when it comes to the, uh, the different brands like the Star Wars and the Marvel, the different properties, it's still all Disney. So that's such a big part of it. What's baffled me is that the Star Wars Skywalker saga, the the nine films, haven't been released through Mondo. But yeah. but Rogue One and um, Solo had been, and I wonder what the deal with that is because I uh, sure like those prequels. I wonder record. if it's still tied up with Sony. Yeah, because they because yeah. Sony they did the last CD reissues, and um, I think for the fortieth anniversary they did a uh, a box set of A New Hope. I have um, that with on the, vinyl. With the is that with the holograms? I think the, I, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has the yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. I was thinking CD box at first, but yes, it yeah, does yeah, have yeah. a new hologram in it. So, but uh, I mean, this that does it's the, the weird one because because people have been frustrated for a long time that even said so that Sony don't seem to be doing it a lot with the Star Wars, and they licensed it out as well to um, I Am Shark. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a, a tiny, tiny, and they, yeah, and so they used. I don't know if they were. They, they used the specialist art posters the, for the covers that they did for the films when they came out the newer films. Right. And it, I, um, and it they, got, they got jammed up, Charlie, too, because like I, I the first really one, this. Force Awakens, came out, and then Last Jedi, I think, took forever, and then. It all fell apart by the time Rise of Skywalker came out. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know if you recall that as well, but I remember those releases. Um, and I, w I remember wondering how we got them, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Just seems yeah, kind of an old thing. I got the sequel trilogy on vinyl off of Disney Music Emporium. Hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I like the original trilogy. I'd like... I mean, I can go find them, I'm sure, but 
I, I like the way I, I, I don't know. I, I prefer new artwork. I like new artwork. It's fun. Hmm. And Mondo's great at doing that. And Waxworks fine at doing that like half <clears> the time. <throat> but when they do use poster artwork, they pick like the best posters, like the Godzilla uh, King of the Monsters from, is it uh, Bear McCurry did that one? Um, they use that great IMAX poster that the painted King Ghidorah paint with the Godzilla. Like hmm. Mondo or Waxworks good about doing that stuff. Mondo really doesn't use poster art. And I know that was a hang up when they tried to do Skyfall. That got, that guy that kind of got squashed. Um, and I kind of I really want those. I really would like deluxe James Bond stuff, but they're in the business of selling people six hundred dollar bottles of liquor over but, uh, the Double uh, Seven store. But again, the uh, so yeah, the James Bond stuff is is where the uh, the soundtracks have just been kind of left. They've, they've started doing some of the Brosnan ones on La La Land, on, on CD. They've expanded them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but again, because it's them, the licensing, there's more, ho yeah. more hoops to jump through. Um, it's, like right. you think, it's like you think you'd see James Bond, the, foot on, the films on 4K by now, but there's just the, the Daniel Craig ones. Right. And there's yeah, I have the digital. Ones. I have the digital 4K versions, but they don't have like the steel books or the the Blu-ray. Yeah, you think that'd be a, a no-brainer, and they they sell loads. Today they today they posted an image of it was like one of those vinyl bears, and it had a wrapping around it that was like from "You Only Live Twice" poster. It looks real shitty. It's a big <laughs> bear, and it was like it was like 312 bucks, and I'm like, guys. Oh, I'd, I'd give you 312 Batman. bucks for a, a, a box set of, of deluxe soundtracks mm. on vinyl. I'd probably end up giving you more if you did all 25. Uh, the Brosnans, I think, are the only ones that have never been released on vinyl in any form, which you're missing, you know, three great David Arnold scores. Yeah. And then you have an Eric Serra score, which as a completist, I would be fine with. Uh, I like Eric Serra. I don't think he's a good fit for Bond. But I would get that record. And uh, Mo and Spencer were telling me that uh, that he was told they were told by Eon that uh, did they tell me this on air? This was after. The, anyway, yeah, yeah. But the, there's a spine, the spine right. number. There's no spine number for seven uh, in Mondo's catalog because I think they wanted to, to save that for I think they were working on Skyfall or something. But um, it sounds like there's, there's a lot of gatekeepers. There's a lot of gatekeepers. Uh, that sort of cut off the direct line to Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson. And so it's like nothing's getting done except this weird stuff. This, this, a, a fountain pen that's like, you know, 200 bucks. And it's like, no, we like the movies. We want the movies in 4K. We want the, the music on vinyl or at least deluxe CDs because the La La Land put out Tomorrow Never Dies, which was David Arnold's first score. Mm. And it's a wonderful set, but La La Land doesn't do vinyl, which which drives me nuts because they're putting out amazing titles. And I just I don't I don't mind if it's poster art because the James Bond movies have had great poster art throughout the years. Use it, use that art, uh, and give us some give us some stuff. But but um, that has nothing yeah, to do with um, Mondo. But uh, is it? Um... Uh, music on vinyl did yeah. Skyfall, mm -hmm. and I imagine probably did No Time to Die as well. And yeah, kind of... yeah, I didn't get No Time to Die. I got, I got Skyfall. It came all beat up, um, but then I, but they also did a, they also did a three disc or two disc of um, Casino Royale, mm. and they sound wonderful. Like I don't know why they don't just keep doing that. Um, that it seems like I don't know why who over at Music on Vinyl was able to get through to Barbara Broccoli and get this I think to happen. I think it's regional though, too, right? Like MOV is, is a European label, yeah, and, right. Um, and I always think that's part of it because I'll also see mirrored releases like MO, MOV will put something out that Mondo puts out in the States, um, and then, um, uh, you know, you'll see that kind of licensing game be played. 
the last one I can think of was um, was Dracula. You know, uh, MOV mm -hmm. announced the Dra uh, a Dracula reissue, and it was just like the original, right? The st standard art uh, and and on red vinyl. Um, and then I think a month later, maybe two, the Mondo version was announced uh, with new art and US. You know, and so and liner notes by Charlie. Uh, and so, uh, the big difference between those, but I, um, but anyway, like I, sometimes I see that from afar, I go, okay, re MOV got the European region, Mondo got the U S or ho however that was kind of chopped up. Um, and so I think that goes into play too, with those bond yeah. ones. Cause I, I see that, that happened pretty wrapped up there. That happened with hook Mondo released yeah. their hook. It sold out fast. And then like, it was like a week later. Uh, music on vinyl did that, that got crazy. canceled though I think yeah that got canceled it was going to be like a three LP it was going to be yeah. Yeah, like a, an expanded one yeah because yeah. again that was that was originally the CD set that La La Land put out yeah, yeah that's the one I wanted yeah and another gift, the Mondo one the Mondo one was cool but it sold out so fast so I'm like oh music on vinyl is doing a, a deluxe version and I went to go pre-order and it was it's like page does not exist like, I wonder oh, if okay. that's I wonder if that's a Sony thing as well, because um, I think Sony operate kind of maybe more more in Europe than they do in the in the US in terms of kind of distributing some things, and like they're mm -hmm. in charge of Columbia, um, who did Dracula, and uh, the Hook was a uh, mm -hmm. was a Columbia film. Spider Man, well, Spider Man wasn't theirs yeah. though, right? Or it was theirs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah, there's, there's been. Yeah, because they recently did the Spider Man, the new, the, the Sam Raimi, at least Spider Man right. 1 and 2. Yeah, the Elfman scores. Yeah, threes or kind of a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> threes, threes, three. But yeah, well, it's, it's... Like three different composers. Right. Because Christopher right. Young did most of the score, and then Deborah Lurie did some of the score, and then someone else, I think it might have been John Debney, John Debney or someone like that. Picked up um, the pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Um, I don't know if I have much more to say about Funko and Mondo. Pretty upset. Pretty upset because we were told nothing's going to change. And here we are nine months later and it changed. And if, if posters are that easy to take away, the thing that sort of built Mondo in, uh, in the, in the closet of, um, of Alamo draft house as a poster printing thing. Yeah. Like you're kind of ripping the heart out of the company. Um, and I know that they say records are going to stay and toys are going to stay, but the message I got from, um, Spencer today, it was a voice message. Um, didn't say anything discouraging at all, but um, I could tell in the inflection in his voice that he was not having a good time. And I'm, I'm curious to know if the days are numbered. I hope not because uh, I mean, I like Mondo. I really do. I like the people involved. I like uh, the product they put out. Um, I've been absolutely loving all of their Toho releases. And there's, there's, there's several, there's several of uh, those that they need to, uh, to finish up to, to complete my collection. And I hope uh, the rug doesn't get pulled out before I get all those. Cause they have how many, how many titles have they not announced that should be announced? Charlie, like Biolante hasn't been released um, uh, yeah, it's probably I'm... like maybe four or five Godzilla, uh, the, uh, Mega Gearus, which I, I, I absolutely love that score. Um, well, there's, which makes me, me... I mean, there's the like, final wars, final wars, um, um, and uh, I'm if Millennium I'm... 2000. Yeah. Uh, well, if, uh, yeah, are they, not, are they? Again, I, I'm kind of wavering because there's yeah. kind of stuff that I know about and stuff that I've, that I've done kind of right. obese for. Right. As kind but of it's somewhere, it's somewhere around. I'm, I'm going to say the stuff they haven't announced, there's probably like four or five. 
So I'm just hoping like those four or five. I'm ho- I'm hoping they do get do Biolante because Biolante is always kind of a bit iffy in terms of some stuff with the rights and things like that. Um, and there's, they've never, it's like some of the uh, the Australian DVD box set I have of the uh, the high eyes um, don't have it. Huh. Interesting. They don't have it in there. They don't, have, but they, they also didn't have Godzilla um, Return of Godzilla either. Right, those two are kind of in in the states. Those are the two that I had to like sort of find bootlegs of. Mm. Of the probably of maybe, the, maybe I mean certainly because oh, uh, it was because was, the first time I saw Return of Godzilla was on VHS over here, and that was, mm-hmm. it was called Godzilla nineteen eighty five, and that was the American cut, the Raymond Burr version with Ray, the Raymond Dr. Burr Pepper. again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a fun idea, you know, to do that. Yeah, but, but, uh, so, but so, yeah, so, so I'm really hoping, I'm glad to hear that you have stuff you're working on that you don't know has been announced or not, because that gives me hope that they're going to follow through on those since since the, the train's already left the station, that mm-hmm. it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll get into my hands. Um, if for some reason the everything goes away as far as the music, Uh, division goes which i really don't want it to happen um if it goes way before some of those titles show up you know like i don't know um like like uh dune part two pick it up like dune part two yeah what's gonna happen i you know i I was counting on that counter you know i would get there would be both of those but you know i don't know we'll see by the fall what's happening and and you're hoping that that maybe Mo and Spencer can do something where they have relationships with those people hmm. that couldn't get them the license. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, maybe waxwork, somebody, anybody like picks up this stuff and, and maybe, you know, keeps it going. Cause my collection is, uh, is interspersed. I don't, I don't do all my Mondo's here, all my other things. Cause I don't remember who released what sometimes. Um, so I have, my Toho shelf and they're all in order of like chronological order. And, uh, and I don't mind Mondo intermi- intermingling with my, my wax work. Um, and I, I, I don't, I want to see that collection be complete. And I want you to have more versions of the witch and, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> all and, and doom too. And doom too. Like it, it's, it's like, it's it's nuts. It's just nuts. I feel like the other shoe can drop at any moment, and we're just left with yeah. more questions. Yeah, it's too bad the uncertainty. And and you know, what yeah. if you were in the other half of the folks that weren't laid off at Mondo? There you are, sitting with jobs um, and wondering about them, probably, and uh, worried about your coworkers who just got bounced. And I, I just really, I just feel really bad for for the folks that that yeah. are affected yeah. by this. I think um, either either Mondo or Funko need to put out some kind of official statement and let everyone know what's going on. Yeah, They're probably writing it as we speak. Yeah, maybe that uh, news article got ahead of them, but too bad. I mean, they got they got to have something ready because you know it's it's Friday, so maybe the guys at Funko are uh, are going to have a lot a late start to their weekend. Um, Cause yeah. I don't think people want to wait till Monday to, to hear what's going on. But again, why would I trust anything Funko says when they said it's going to be business as usual and they mm. ripped the poster division out of Mondo nine months I later. Think they'll, just blame, like, I, they'll just blame their first quarter losses. Right. They'll be like, yeah. well, we didn't know that was going to happen. And we didn't know we had to bury $30 million in the landfill. <laughs> but I don't know. I'll be interested to know I, what they do, what they say for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably have something coming up on on Monday. Can I uh, can I shout out uh, Tim and Miss Eighties in the chat? They've been, yes. they've been going along the whole time. Thanks uh, guys for for your comments. We really we love having you guys here. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for showing up. This was a bit of a last minute stream too, um, because we got the news, and I was I was I was fully planned. This has been sitting here for. 
two weeks now, two and a half weeks, because I was in Los Angeles shooting a documentary for the show Lost. Um, and I came back and I've been busy doing that. And um, it just hasn't been opened yet. I was going to do this today. The news broke. And I'm like, sorry, beautiful Joe, too. I have other things on my mind. I was going to I was going to steamroll my unboxing video to to just bitch and moan at Funko. And so I figured I'll do that Monday. Um, as we as we speak, I think my copy of Knives Out from Funko is sitting on the porch uh, or not Funko from Mondo. Yeah. Last week, can I just say last week, Mondo on Facebook updated their lo- their 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 profile picture. And it was the Mondo logo with a little Funko crown on the corner. And I was just like, oh, no, this feels bad. This feels <laughs> real bad. I don't like that. I do not like that. Um, well, so, it's not too late to get Funkos of Mo and Spencer. Uh, I'm going to toss all mine. I, have, I, have, I, I got rid of a lot of mine. And I think I'm just going to bag them up when we're done here and just toss them. Send them to the landfill with their buddies. <laughs> Goodwill. Yeah, uh, that'd probably be better. I'm sure, someone would want to um, Princess Lay on a speeder bike. There you go. Well, Ralph, Charlie, I'm I'm glad you guys made time for this today. I'm, I appreciate <laughs> appreciate yeah. getting together. Should probably get going. It's been it's been almost an hour. Uh, want to do some quick plugs, uh, David? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm active on. Instagram and Twitter, and I have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's a little dormant right now. Uh, real life has gotten in the way a lot, but uh, follow me there. I'm, I'm, I'm always plugging something on Instagram and Twitter and, and having fun showing off what, what I'm up to. So fi- find me there at the vinyl score. All right. And what about you, Charlie? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter um, at Films on Wax. Um, um, it's, it always seems to be chaotic at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's been a crazy few weeks. And, uh, but yeah, and, um, when you get there, you can, uh, find my, uh, sub stack, my new, yeah, yes. my sub stack, um, movie drone about film music, uh, which, uh, I need to do a new one of, cause I haven't done one of those for a while either. So I need to catch up, but, uh, thanks for inviting me on this. Yeah. They're always great reads and we'll have to have you back on, um, under happier circumstances, hopefully. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah I look forward. I look forward to to reading your your OB strips for upcoming Toho releases because um, Toho Toho Records is it's an obsession of mine now, and um, I love every single one of them. And you're you're a big part of that. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, Charlie, has thank a you great, for joining. Charlie has a great oh. piece on Empire Strikes Back that came out came out today i think so check that out too yeah i saw that on my i saw that on my uh, notifications and i need Thank to read you. it but but i've been so like scrambling <laughs> to get this this stream up and running mm. um so well, thank you for joining me yeah thanks the, all the, the teho ones are always so fun to do as well and because i love godzilla so much yeah that uh so thanks for reading yeah this guy this is the guy right here burning yeah, this is what this is this is this is what I felt like today. This is what I felt like was was burning Godzilla, um, just fuming, just fuming. Um, so thank you for joining me, Charlie. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the end animation here. Just stick around if you can stick around for uh, I don't know, a minute through this mm-hmm. video. Um, I want to chat a little bit more, and then I will see you guys. Uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Bye all.